Welcome to the first Railway Roundup from Telford Steam Railway. My name is Richard and I'm going to show you a few of the things that we've been up to recently, so come and follow me. So we're now in the local shed here at Horsey and I've been joined by Dave, who's the director of 5619 Limited. And Dave, we have a bit of progress about 5619? We do, yep. Um, probably most of you are aware it had uh, a boiler repair carried out over, the, over nearly the last 12 months, but uh, really sort of started this year is when the actual repair commenced. That's, we're pleased to say that's now completed, been signed off by our border inspector. So, a um, bit, bit more sort of uh, fettling on the loco, just to uh, fine tune it, and um, she's good to go. She Excellent. had a trial run last weekend, or last week, I should say, when the, the inspector was here for the steam test. And um, he's very pleased with it. And um, as I say, it's a relief to us that uh, absolutely we, we finally got there with it. Absolutely. So, so it passed its hydraulic test, didn't it? Passed its passed steam, steam test. test. Yes. So it's ready to come back into service. It is. Yes. Yeah. The, say the normal day-to-day -day servicing of it now, which is a bit more, a bit more um, in depth on the local like this, as opposed to rocket. But uh, yes, happy. Yeah, Good. Now, I understand there was some uh, talk on social media and some ideas about questioning the thickness of the tyres on the 56. I wonder if you can clarify the situation. Yeah, th there were reports. Um, we don't know where they came from. Um, we've had an independent inspector in to assess the tyres against the, the standards that uh, another railway works to and the GWR standards. Um, we've got um, documentation to say they are within limits for our use. Obviously, we're not a main line. We run short trains, slow speed. Absolutely no issues with our tyres for the foreseeable. Um, yes, the local will be coming up to its 10-year overhaul in 2025, um, but we foresee no issues on it reaching that, which of course is its 100th birthday. 100th birthday, with 19... 1925, 1925. 1925. So there's a big celebration. It is, yeah, party. It? But that's absolutely fantastic news that it's back running and it's back mm -hmm. in service. So when can we? When can the viewers expect to see 5619 running? It's scheduled to run um, public services Sunday next weekend. So that will be the 10th, won't it? The 10th, 10th of yeah. September. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in certain service uh, on the 24th and the 1st of October as well. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to come down yeah. and see 5619 in action. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We're stood in front of uh, Rocket now, or one of our other steam engines, and I wonder if you could just give us an update on where we are with this look. Yeah, Rocket has now been withdrawn um, for its 10 year early boiler overhaul. Um, we have plans in place to strip the loco and send the boiler away. Um, all being well, it should be a fairly swift turnaround. Um, really, it's a case of stripping the tanks off, cab off, and lifting the boiler. Um, our uh, contractor will then take the boiler away. Yeah. Um, do the necessary inspection, repairs yep. if any required, um, and return it, rebuild. Well, so that's a way we can spend a bit of time doing um, overhauling the bottom end, the valve gear, and give it a good uh, inspection. Yep. And, uh, good. Making sure that uh, all is well. Um, and we've brought it over the pit, haven't we, in the yep. shed, yep. ready for that to start. To yeah, that should be started yep. hopefully in the next week or so. So, so volunteers. To do help working with that? On yes, that? Um, I think it's going to be mainly evenings. Um, but say, it'll be a case of stripping underneath, dropping the, the grate out and the uh, ash pan, and then getting in the tank, which is always a favourite job. <laughs> yeah, lovely okay. clean jobs, isn't it? With that, so <laughs> and, yeah, um, absolutely. And bolting it all, and away we go. Oh, good, good. Well, hopefully, isn't it? You know, we'll get things moving. And, uh, yes. You know, mm -hmm. I know we can't put a time on when it's back, but hopefully it won't be too long before mm -hmm. Rocket's back in steam. Time and money, Rich. Time, time and, and money. It's always the same, isn't it? So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, Dave, lovely. Thank you okay, very much. No Thank you. Okay, now we're in the Spring Village Yard in front of our Pacers, and we're with Kev, one of our volunteers. Kev, what work are you doing on the Pacers? So, as part of our standard operating procedures, we have to do regular exams on the PACES. So today we're conducting an A exam, 
So I'm working alongside Dave Jenkins, the, one of our famous film stars that appears a lot in our videos. Um, we're doing an exam on the post system. It's a check of the mechanical, it's a check of the electrics, it's a check of the safety systems. Um, it's a functional check of the unit to make sure it's fit and ready for, fit for purpose ready for our gala that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. I was weeks. going to say, when, when, is that the next time that the paces are due? I believe so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lovely, so yeah. today is a, it's a lovely sunny day, thank goodness. It's not raining as it normally is when we <laughs> have to do this. But uh, today is it doing the exam on this one and then doing the exam on the on the next paper in, in the set. And I understand, isn't it, that gala we're hoping to run the two of our class 142 paces together as a forecast set? Possibly. So, yeah, that's Possibly. We'll wait to see what comes from the operations <laughs> department. Yeah. But, uh, should be very exciting. I think that's the master plan. Good. So. Lovely. Thank you, Kev. Okay, Lovely. no problem. Thank you very much. Well, now we're on Horsey and Dawley Station, and I've been joined by Chris, who's the Permanent Way and Infrastructure Director. And Chris, I'd like you to show us a bit what work we've been doing about the drainage down here. Certainly, Richard. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, as you can probably see now, uh, or through the video, what we're just about to do, uh, we started the first phase of the relay back down to Dosley. Um, this first section is about 200 to uh, 220 metres. Um, through uh, or just uh, uh, the bottom of Horsey and Dawley station uh, platform um, but the drainage runs through the platform to the former signal box. Um, this, uh, this the P-way works uh, have been taking quite a long while to get to uh, with Covid and one thing or another but we've now managed to get it started and the first phase of that particular phase is the drainage. So can we go and have a look Chris? Certainly yeah. yeah. Okay. So here we are on the track bay, Chris. I can see that the rails finished there. They used to go a bit further than that in the past. Can you talk us through what, what work's been done? Yeah, certainly, Richard. Yeah, so as I said, um, the, the relay back down to Dosley is going to be done in different phases. Um, phase one is the initial through Horsey and Dawley platform uh, through to just the other side of what was the Barra crossing, uh, pedestrian crossing. Um, uh, the first phase, as I said, of that is the drains. So in order to facilitate this first section, we actually have to take the rails back enough into the platform so that we can now, the next bit of, the, of this particular phase is to get the track beds to the right depth and the right angle. Uh, what we have done is the drains were, <coughs> excuse me, were on the inside of the curve. They've now been placed on the outside of the curve. So the, the camber that was on the track bed itself has to be changed the other direction. Um, so instead of leaning into the curve, it will lean out of the curve um, to fetch all the water into the drains and uh, take the drainage away. Uh, as we can see at the moment, I know we've, we have had a little, we got a, we're in nice sunshine at the moment. We have had quite a lot of rain over the last few weeks. Uh, the track bed is in reasonably dry condition, which um, the drains are doing what they should do. Uh, which is fantastic. Um, that's what we've spent all the money on is trying to get this uh, drainage in place and done. And you, you say it's working, it absolutely is working, isn't it? Because before the drainage, it used to be completely sodden down here all the time, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've got uh, several videos we took in the past where uh, a little bit further around the corner as we walked down, where it was just, it was like a river uh, and, and puddles across the track bed. Um, so at the moment, yes, we know it's not right because the, the camera's the wrong way. Um, but once that's done, uh, it will aid. But the, because we've took the drainage to the other side of the signal box, the water that's coming down from uh, the, the summit is now being diverted through the new drains. So that's taking a lot of it out of the way. Yeah, it's absolutely, isn't it? So if we walk down a bit further Certainly. we go down, let's have a look as yeah. we go down to the other yeah. So I'm, I'm currently walking on where the new drains have been placed in. Um, this has just been topped off with some ballast, just ready to stop any of the sides of the embankment coming down and filling the, the, uh, the covering up um, and over the top of the pipe where it's until we're ready. And so you can see here, this is one of the catch pits that's been installed. So with the catch pits, the pipe work comes in 300mm off the base and it goes out at 300mm off the base. So basically what should happen is any silt, what I should be caught into this, yeah. hence why it's called a catch pit. It's to catch all that sediment, um, but the water should be able to freely be able to, to move through and drain. Yeah, fantastic, isn't it? It's a, it's a, a lot of work that's, that's taken place here. So it is, it is, Richard. And um, we, we've had a contractor in to do it. It's it's not a job, we, it's a job we could have done ourselves, but time-wise, 
it would have taken us a long while to do it. Absolutely. Um, hence why we went out to a contractor. Because we had a, a, a small window, didn't we, to, to get this done uh, before the track needs to come down for our Polar Express, isn't uh, it? It certainly does. We need to get uh, four or five panels back in place. Uh, we probably need to get track down to here just to allow that little bit of a run out um, for the engine coming in at Polar. And who's got that? job to look forward to Chris? Uh, that will be us as it is actually Richard. <laughs> yeah, well, um, some of the members it. Um, yes. yeah, of the P-Way gang. Uh, of the members of the P-Way gang. Uh, yes, looking forward to it. It's nice to get some track back in. Absolutely. It'll be really fantastic. It's As I said, it's been a long time coming. We we actually ripped um, up to the Barra Crossing out, which we'll walk down to in a minute. Um, <coughs> three and a half years back was when we ripped that track bit out and then we went into Covid, uh, one thing or another. And that slowed us up, but so we're finally here. And then our passengers have got a bit of extra track to, to ride on, haven't they, as we come down to the barracks? Absolutely, coast. yes. You know, as I said, it's the first bit's about 200, 220 metres that we're putting, that we're doing. Um, <coughs> and once we have got that back in, yes, we will, um, on occasional days, the end of the day, probably just run down here, um, just so that we let the neighbours know that we, we are moving forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if we, if we come down to here, because this is at the Barra Crossing uh, here, which is the way across the track, and as you can see, that's Dozley in that direction, isn't it? So what are our plans for that? So it certainly is, yeah. So the, the as I said, the phase one plan is to is to run down here with new, with new uh, track, uh, incorporate a new Barra Crossing, uh, which is called a Barra Crossing or a Foot Crossing. Um, that will go back almost in the same place as it is. Uh, we've just got to square it up a bit because it was originally went at a slight angle. Um, under the ORR regulations, um, they want it to go straight yeah. um, at 90 degrees to the track bed. Um, that will be sort of one of the last bits of this phase once we get down here, because we'll need to put the track in place and the crossing at the same time. Yes. Um, so we, we, you know, we, we, we don't want to be doing it over a period of time. It'll be sort of done perhaps over a weekend that we get that in and done. Um, going forward. Um, going beyond that, as you can see going down, uh, the next phase again will be probably down to the Cheshire Cheese Bridge which is probably around about the halfway point, yeah. slightly less than the halfway point between Horse A and Dozley. Um, that will be the next phase. What we'll do then is we'll get the track bed sorted out <coughs> that, um, that the alignment's right and then it'll be a case of um, coming in with ballast leveling the ballast out, doing an initial uh, compaction with, with compactors, um, lane sleepers and railing and progressing the railhead over a period of time. So it's good because you can look and you can see that there's ballast has been down and we have actually relayed track as you yes. said earlier on isn't it? So, yep. so in the scheme of things without putting words into your mouth is it, is it not too difficult a job to get down to the Cheshire Cheese and Dozley or? Um, it's, it's a reasonably straightforward job. I don't think there's got to be much done with the actual track bed. I think it's just a case of getting the alignments right and, and cleaning it up. Um, it, it comes down to money. Yes. As um, it, as it in all honesty, Richard, as, as most, of, most of the things are, it's, it's money and volunteers, absolutely right. Um, this initial bit here where we're looking at now, uh, we did have to change the plan. So the drains originally came out just the other side of this fence here. You might be able to see the ditch. Unfortunately, where the camera's standing is a high voltage cable All right. that run down here, down the footpath, and then sort of snaked round and goes off site over there. Um, so they had to take the drains a little bit further down. Yes. Um, and you can see where the other catch bit yes. is there, the last one. And it then comes back across to the other side. Um, <clears throat> so that's unfortunately was one of the things you, until you you get to do a job you yeah we didn't you know, know. Did we, so no. um, obviously as you, you're well aware Richard we're um, part of this this next phase um, is also to uh, install a footpath yes that's um, right. from this point is where it'll be um, here um, running down um, parallel with the track bed but off the bottom of the embankment um, that will then pop out um, by the Cheshire Cheese pub. Yes, that's right, isn't it? That's mm. going to be uh, the Coronation Way, isn't and it? And that's Coronation Way, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. we tapped into some funding and, and match funding from ourselves. Um, but it's something we can do to give back to the, the neighbours um, as a thank you because we know over the years they've been walking on the track bed, as you can probably just see, there's a lady just walked down as we were talking, um, taking a dog to walk. So we've said, right, if we can actually give something to help the neighbours out, that um, you know they can, we can facilitate them actually walking 
from this point down to the Cheshire Cheese Bridge. Um, that's what we're doing, and yeah. so we're, we're doing that. Yeah, it'd be lovely, and it's a nice way to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III. Absolutely, uh, I as think. Part of that, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Trish. I sorry. think as part of that, I think we, we were talking about some, if we can get some chairs designed with yes. with the coronation crown or, or with yeah. with his uh, um, royal emblem yeah. on it. So uh, we were looking at so uh, that's part of what we wanted to do on Absolutely. that one. Yeah, so, yeah. And like you say, it's nice to be able to provide something from for the community, isn't it? And, and yes. provide something for that. So, yeah. 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 Chris, thank you very much. That's lovely. Richard, thank, thank you. Okay, so we're, welcome. we're in the Spring Village in the glorious sunshine. We're standing in front of Hector. And we've got with us here Andrew, who's Hector's owner. They've done a lot of work on Hector recently. Excellent. Race 2, obviously, with 56 going on, I've got to get a lot of effort towards that. But I think we've really done We've got to manage to squeeze some time with Hector. Recently, we've had to readjust the timing chain. Last year, we found out one of the adjuster springs are broke, so we had a new one made. We've got to go back again again. But recently, that was a stretch, and that was nothing that's, well, you know, what's up. So, yesterday, we had it all to the pieces, readjusted it, put it all back together, and today, we've had it running again. And the noise fixed itself, it's really fine. It sounds absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? That was the best it's, it's sound in the law, I'd say, I'd say since it was made. It's got to be It's an absolute testament. What I love about it is not only are you been working with it, but your granddad and your dad here down here working for three generations. All three generations. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. So it's brilliant, the is running. When do when people next see it? The current plan is the Yankton goes to Eastern Arnold on the 17th of September. Right, it'll be fantastic. And I think we'll have Hector will be running great back. That's what I believe so. so a rare opportunity for some travel behind yeah. Hector. So if you're around, of course, hey, come down on the 17th and have the ride behind Hector. And thanks very much for that. Thank you. So we're now in the, in the uh, rear yard uh, by the side of the local shed to talk about the tram. Some of you may know we've got a, currently got an appeal to replace uh, this steam boiler, which is uh, life expired. So the link for the fund is in the description. Once we've bought the boiler, we will then need to restore the tram, as you can see here, uh, so that the boiler will, can be fitted. It's a vertical boiler that will need to go in, in, in here. Uh, restore the tram, repaint it. Behind it is the coach, uh, and we will need that repainted. So quite a lot of work to be done, um, but the fund is going well, uh, and hopefully it won't be long before we've got the tram back in steam. Okay, so we're now in the BSO Coach 9406, and I've been joined by Ben, one of our volunteers who's been heavily involved in the restoration of this coach. So Ben, could you just tell us a bit what's been going on, please? Yes, so uh, BSO 9406 joined us several years ago now, and it's coming through its restoration uh, to be converted into a disabled access coach. Um, as you can see around you, we've installed new wooden panelling to the walls, uh, and we're currently waiting for the flooring to be put down, and then, um, it, the passenger area will be coming together quite nicely. And that's lovely, isn't it? One thing I've heard is fresh about this coach is we're going to have a bar area, yes, are we? Yes, so, so just to your left here, we're going to have a bar uh, in this vehicle and we'll be serving hopefully hot and cold drinks on select days throughout our running season and special events. Now you mentioned, Ben, didn't you, there, that this is going to be a disabled access coach. So why is that important to have a disabled access coach running on the railway? Um, so for, for many years now, we've been unable to accommodate wheelchairs on board our trains. Uh, and it's really important to us that we're inclusive and we're able to be more accessible for everybody. Um, so we're converting the old luggage area, which is behind the camera at the moment, and um, that'll be fitted out with a disabled access seating, ramps, so we can get wheelchairs on board, on board and off the trains very quickly. So isn't that that's going to be really fantastic, isn't it, that we're going to be fully accessible? And, and I don't want you to pin you down to the exact date, but roughly when do we hope that the BSO will be in service? We've been hit by a few delays, which I think we all know happens in uh, railway restoration, um, but we're aiming to have the coach in service by Easter 2024. Um, all things going well, it should be up and running. So that's fantastic, isn't it? Thank you. Now, the other thing that you are really heavily involved in at the railway is the Polar Express. Now, that's mm -hmm. something that's coming on the horizon, isn't it? So yes. can you give us a bit of an update on that? Yes, so we're only a few months away now until the Polar Express 2023 kicks off, returning to the Telford Steam Railway once again. Uh, we'll be running from the 24th of November all the way through to the 23rd of December. So we're running a few extra trains this year to really boost um, the capacity and making sure that you can travel with us. Um, tickets are on sale now and, you know, What's to miss? I'm sure you'd love it. And, and one other thing that we're doing that's new this year is, is uh, trains send? Trains yes, send, yeah. so we're running special educational needs and disabilities trains this year, which is um, allowing us again to be more inclusive yes. as a railway, um, but it means that there's a lot less sensory um, 
things going on around in the carriage and it's helping those people um, enjoy the event um, as much as everyone else does. And, and just on top of that as well, it's great to have uh, Great Western uh, Locomotive 5619 joining us again this year. Oh, that's really funny. We saw that in the shed earlier. Yeah. Oh, wow, fantastic. And I think it'll be great to have that hall in the, the Christmas Absolutely. services again. Absolutely. Can't wait. Can't wait for it to come out. So that's lovely. So how, how do people, if they're interested to come on the Pope Express, how, how can they get tickets for Yeah, so there will be a link in the description uh, to our website, which is www.telfordsteamrailway.co.uk. You can follow that link there and that'll take you to our website and you can book tickets online. I have to say, I haven't been, been on it twice before. It is an absolute fantastic event and it, it really is brilliant. So, so yeah, if, you, if you're interested in that, book those tickets because they are selling out uh, quickly. So, yeah, yeah ben, thank you very thank much. That's lovely. Me. Thank you. Okay. So, and with our new volunteers that we're getting, <laughs> no, it's the Scarecrow Day uh, in the Horsey Village, in Spring Village. Um, run by the Friends of Horsey Pool Environs, so we're just really happy to be able to support their day with our own um, two scarecrows, uh, Fred and Bob. So that's it for today. Our next events will be uh, the Anything Goes Diesel Gala on the 17th of September. We've then got a uh, fish and chip special on the evening of the 30th of September, and then it's our mixed traffic gala on the 1st of October, which is also the last uh, day of the season. 5619, as you've heard, is, uh, is back in service, so we'll be running quite a lot on, uh, on our running, normal running days, so please keep an eye on our Facebook and our website for details of when it's running. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed the first Railway Roundup from the Telford Steam Railway. It is something that we'd like to do more regularly, um, so if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, thank you very much.